Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. In this episode I am going to dig in a little bit into lambdas and discuss creating a stateful lambda. So the canonical form of a lambda is something like this. So this lambda is a lambda that captures nothing, takes no parameters, and returns nothing. And indeed, you can leave out the parameter list here, and you get the same result, which is nothing happening. If you had a local variable, such as this i equal to 1, you can capture i and reference it and return it. And now if we return our lambda result, we're going to return 1. If we wanted to, we can capture this i by reference, we can mutate it, and we can return the value again, which is now 2. If we wanted to capture by copy and mutate it, we're not going to be allowed to do that. We need to add the mutable keyword. And if we add mutable, we are required to put our parentheses back in. So now we're getting the value 2 as expected. Now if we were to call our lambda, and then return the value i, we're only going to get 1 because we have taken this i by copy. Now at this point, I'm going to introduce some stuff from C++14, and that is, namely, the ability to put expressions in our capture list. So we could do something like this, where we are creating a variable called i, and we are mutating it inside our lambda. So we now get essentially a count of how many times our function has been called, and that should reasonably start at zero. So in this way, you can make a stateful lambda that is carrying around its own state and doing interesting things. In fact, if you wanted to, you can even have a stateful lambda that owns an object such as a unique pointer. And this lambda now has the interesting property of being non-copyable because you cannot copy a unique pointer. So we are getting this the fact that this state of the unique pointer that's inside our lambda cannot be copied is going to show up if we try to make a copy of the lambda itself. So where I wanted to go with this is that we can make functions that generate more interesting things than simply the number of times they have been called. So now what have we created? We have a function that is doing an exchange of the values i and j, and we are making the next value be j plus i. So if we have one call to our function, then we get the value 1. If we have two calls, we get the value 1. Three calls. So, as you can see, we are actually generating the Fibonacci sequence again, and we are doing it in probably the most efficient way possible, since it's just a linear calculation, and we don't have to do anything complicated with Binet's like we did in the previous episodes that talked about the Fibonacci sequence, or doing anything like matrix multiplication. We're just simply linearly adding this up. So, if we were so inclined, We can do something like this to get like the tenth value of the Fibonacci sequence. And the compiler is pretty much guaranteed to be doing all of this at compile time. And it doesn't even necessarily need a very high optimization level to do this. So O2 anyhow with Clang. So there you have it, stateful lambdas, in this case, making something that generates a sequence, and I hope in the next episode to play a little bit more with sequence generators and what we can do with them in C++14 and C++11.
Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.